I'm Robert Scoble, and uh, the startup liaison officer for Rackspace, and we're here in the Rackspace studio in TechCrunch Disrupt 2012, seeing cool startups. And we have another one of the Battlefield finalists to come and talk to me about what's going on. I think they're actually one of the cooler companies. As a user, I think they're the best company for me because uh, I'm an iPad freak and I'm looking for cool collaborative stuff to do on my iPad and Expect Labs, this finalist, uh, has a really cool app. I was talking to uh, O'Malek in the Apple line today and he was raving about it. So I'm very happy to have you guys on. So uh, who are you? I'm Tim Tuttle, I'm the CEO and founder of Expect Labs. Thank you for having me on the, the show. Yeah, and so what is, what is it that you're doing on the iPad app? Well. Um, well, so I'll take a step back. Oh, well, so the app that we're launching, that we're demoing today, is an uh, iPad app called MindMeld, okay. which is the first, Mind yeah, MindMeld, <laughs> the first voice and video calling app that actually understands what you say as you talk, and we use that information to automatically find relevant information so that it's at your fingertips in case you need it. Okay. But as a company, what we're building is really a platform that's designed to be able to power language analysis across lots of different applications. So what this platform tries to do is uh, understand, it's, first of all, it tries to pay attention to what's happening in your life, yep. and then passively listen to conversations that might be taking place, understand them, and use that to get a better sense of what information might be relevant, and then show it to you if you want it. Okay. So that's what so, it is. So I'm writing a book on context, it's called The Age of Context, and this sounds like a contextual app. That's exactly it's what it is. It's trying to yes. understand more and more about me as I live my life Absolutely. and talk to you. And yeah. So it's it's listening to the voices that we're talking about? It's or? listening to the voice. It's combining that with information that we know about you from your social graph with that when you log with Facebook. It uses your location. It uses um, information, so your voice, as well as other cues that you give the application when you're using it during a conversation. Okay. And what we're focused on really is the, how do you get context during a conversation like this? Because yeah. there is a very rich amount of contextual information that if you're able to understand enough of it and users are able to give subtle feedback as the conversation's going, it can actually be very good at not only finding stuff that you want, but anticipating information that you haven't asked for yet and getting it for you. Yeah, we, we just in this conversation, we already mentioned your pro the company name and product name. Does it use, the, does it understand Absolutely. when I say a company name like Intel or uh, Absolutely. So Microsoft? That's, so that's something? exactly what it's supposed to do and that's what it does now. But I mean, the, the, the idea, the vision that we have as a company is within 10 years, if not sooner than that, every conversation, whether it's a conversation like this or a phone call or a video chat or a web conference, whatever, there'll be a component alongside that will be able to understand parts of the conversation that will be used to recognize important concepts, such as company names or the names of people, the names of local businesses, and that information can then be found in advance and displayed for you so that you have it right away in case you need it. Now, so, yeah. If we said something like, in tomorrow's meeting, can we talk about this? Could it understand that kind of sentence and understand that I'm, we're referring to a meeting with me and you tomorrow on my Google Calendar? Yeah, so I could, I could certainly understand basic syntax. You know, uh, if you're asking a question, if you're saying like, uh, you know, meet me at this restaurant in Union Square, it knows that's a location, it knows it's a business. I mean, this type of intelligence, you know, is computer systems are getting very good at being able to understand that. Yeah. We're trying to do it by picking out pieces of the conversation that are particularly meaningful and using that as a cue to get the information that you need. And okay. I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example, right? So, I mean, we have an iPad app that does this. It displays uh, information as you're talking in a conversation, but you can easily imagine having a phone call where you're, you say to somebody, I'll meet you over at Starbucks. You put the phone down, it will show you a map of how to get there, right? You, we'll, we'll be talking on Skype or FaceTime and I'll say, oh, you know, I read this awesome uh, post by Ohm on Giga Ohm, yeah. and it'll pull, it'll show me that article so that I know what you're talking about, right? So this yeah. is a kind of thing. And of course, business use cases. You know, we're in a business meeting, and I say, "What are the Q3 sales numbers?" It shows up on the flat panel behind us. Sounds a little like science fiction, but we're going to start seeing these apps now, and yep. ten years from now, they'll be everywhere. I I think we're going to see a, a bunch. This is why I'm writing this book because we're I'm noticing. The world is shifting from the age of social, which brought us some really important companies, you know, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, yeah. uh, Zynga, stuff like that, to, the age, to the age of context, which is going to bring us all sorts of contextual things. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, you know, the Google Glasses are going to be like this, Absolutely. right? We're going to be talking, and the glasses are going to be showing exactly. me stuff. And so the key, the key. Are difference, you thinking about these glasses? Well, so that, this is why in my, we're entering this world where you no longer go to your desk and sit at your keyboard and type in queries to get what you want. Yeah. Your devices are with us, whether in your glasses or whether on the, the tablet on your wall or the panel on your wall or the table in front of you. These devices will pick up on all these cues, and they'll need to because yeah. we'll, we'll no longer be comfortable with, we'll, we'll longer, no longer be patient enough to be able to spell out the exact query that we want to get yeah. the information. And so these machines will be smart enough to anticipate, listen, pay attention, and they'll work great, I think, to get the information that we need. Is there any way to, to explicitly talk to MindMeld and say, MindMeld, can you pull up a chart of how many times I've been to a Chinese restaurant in the past month? You yeah, know, no, like so there, there's um, Versus me Mexican restaurants in the past month? Yeah, so, so the thing we're doing is we're listening passively to yeah. everything, but at all points in the conversation, if there's something specific, you can say, you know, show me a, a map to you know, Blue Bottle Coffee, or... How, how, do you, how do you talk to the system? So you can, it, since it will pick up things in the normal conversation, it will pick up things like that. And okay. one of the things that we've, we've built in as a way to sort of just give it general voice commands. They're very basic right now, but there's no reason why... Maybe we should see it in action, right? Well, so we have a video of, uh, of a screencast of how it works. Yeah, let's see it in action. Tiffany, can you move so I can see the screen? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the, there we go. So this app, you can, you know, it's just like another calling app where you can talk to one or more people um, in a conversation. When you start a call, it'll show you information about the people you're talking with. That's pulled from your social graph, and yep. that gives it a baseline context. But the cool part is when you start talking, it will start listening to what everyone's saying. And um, if you say something like, I think in this example, um, you know, I say, I think we're going to go have a meeting with Marissa Meyer after TechCrunch Disrupt. And you'll see the swirl start spinning in the upper left, left hand corner, it'll start listening. It'll identify what people are saying and then try to extrapolate and get concepts that might be related. So it pulls information about Marissa Meyer, it pulls yeah. information about TechCrunch Disrupt. And we show you this continuously changing set of information as the conversation changes, not with the expect expectation that you're going to look at it all the time, but the idea is that you could glance down and jog your memory if you forget something, or if you want to point out something. You know, I just showed you, you can drag anything over to the sharing panel of the application, and that's a way to instantly confirm with somebody, oh, hey, are we meeting at this location? Have you seen this video? Or here's a picture yeah. of my vacation last week. Check it out right now. So it's voice and touch merge together to hopefully create a much more natural experience for finding and sharing information on a touch-driven device. Now this is really awesome. Yeah. Um, can you use this in a conversation like this? Can I just put the iPad down and it'll listen to us? So it certainly can, although like if there's, uh, if you're using the, the mic built in and there's a lot of background noise, it might pick up some noise. But, but in general, as long as there's not a whole lot of noise, it'll work pretty good in a situation like this. It works great if you're talking directly into the device, talking to people on the other end, you know, but certainly, you know, in a few years there'll be conference rooms and meeting rooms, which will have great omnidirectional mics that will pick up this stuff and it'll do a very good job. Wow. But the key thing is like we're not um, we don't we're not relying on this thing to be perfectly accurate. Yeah. Right? Like see, so we're not trying to answer questions. When we do recognize something, we're trying to use that to be helpful. When we don't understand what people are saying because there's noise or because you're mumbling or whatever reason, you're, you're still where you were when you started, so you're no worse off. We think that that's probably a better model for incorporating speech as, a, as an element of contextual discovery. So. Yeah. So. It's really a, a, a cool world. I, you know, I had dinner with the guys that started Siri the other night, yeah. and Siri is pretty stupid right now. You know, you, if you ask it a question, like I, I tried asking it last night, how many times have I been to Chinese restaurants in the past month? Apple does really does know that answer. Yeah, it and it's just not hooked up. Yeah, and and it doesn't problem. understand the context of what, yeah. what I did, you know, yeah. or, or even ask it, where's my next meeting? Yeah. It, it shows you the next meeting, but yeah. it doesn't show you where it is. That, yeah. That's yeah. not what I asked. I didn't ask it what my next meeting is. I said, when, where yeah. is my next meeting? It's yeah, not it's, very smart. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a child now, but I mean, over the next, you know, you know 10 years, 15 years, it'll get better and better to the point where it starts becoming much more natural. And even today, it's useful in certain use cases where you're, you know what its limitations are. Siri is useful sometimes, right? This application will be useful in certain use cases. So we started doing this because, um, you know, you might remember our last company, it was a company called Trubio. We built yep. a, a very popular video search engine. And as part of doing that, we needed to be able to extract meaning from streams of audio and video information. 
and our core team is from there, and we have a lot of PhDs from MIT and Carnegie Mellon, and we realized that that technology was starting to get good enough that we could apply it to things like real-time conversations yeah. to extract meaning from this. And so this is the company really, that's the genesis, that's where we started. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's that, crazy. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. Well, good luck today. I, Thank you. I think it's the coolest product for a user. I have a feeling they're going to go for the business, you know, because I know what happens backstage, you know, well, Eric is always going, pick the good company, not the cool product, you know. Well, we're going to see, we'll see, the judges will know, but yeah, you're probably right. This, this is a little bit uh, forward thinking and we're probably not as far along as some of these other companies, but yeah. hopefully you see the, people will see the potential yeah. and hopefully people will use our app, which is available in the App Store starting in October. Oh, it's so called, it's not available not yet? Not yet, but it'll be available in October. Can I get so. on the test flight? Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. It's called MindMel, the company's called Expect Labs. Yeah. Please check it out. I already added it to my uh, tech or my Facebook uh, startup list, so I'll be watching it for uh, news on it, yeah. and uh, I'll certainly be one of the first users. We'll certainly it's, put you on test. It's flight. really an uh, interesting idea, and in this world of context, it's really going to yeah. be pretty mind blowing. You should I think. put it in your book too. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, watch. Where's the website we should sign up for? Uh, so if you go to expectlabs.com, yeah. there'll be a link that lets you sign up right there. You can also sign up for the developer platform that we're going to release early next year, so that's where you can find it out. Very cool, thanks for Thank coming you very out and yeah, spending a little. Pleasure. I know you gotta go and uh, do the final presentation, right. right? Good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Hopefully you win the 100 grand. So. <laughs>